pick of the litter mobbing deep in the woods with six other niggers yelling at the trees like, hey, hi, mister. I'm life litters. Of all right, all right. You too. What is the mother freaking deal and what is good up in your hood? It is the one and only the man himself, Sleepy. As you could tell by the fit today, we are going to do a golf wing video. I'm doing this video for two reasons. One, because people have requested that I do it. And two, I'm doing this video because I feel like a lot of people that watch my videos are like of a younger age, which is totally cool. I fucking respect all you guys for being into clothes and music and on your shit uh, when you're 14, 15, 16 years old. But I feel like like that whole odd future movement, like when it was like a disease, like everybody fucked with it and it was super fucking crazy and it was just taking everybody with it. I feel like that was like at least five years ago, maybe six years ago. And I feel like the people that are watching this right now that are 14, 15, 16 years old, five years ago you were nine, 10, 11 years old. I just doubt that at that age, you were really a part of that whole movement, which is why I wanna to explain to you guys what it was like for me. And um, because at the time I was, 17 years old 18 years old and I was fully conscious of what was going on and it was like fuck dude that that whole time period of odd future and like 2011 2012 like that had a huge impact on me and my life and it like you know it helped me a lot so I just want to explain that to you guys and give you guys some insight about what it was like at that time being a part of that I've recorded this video like five times I've given you guys too much information and made it too long and then too short with not enough information. So fuck it. I swear to God, this is the last time that I'm recording this video and I'm just going to put it out how it ends up. So hopefully it has some information with it and then some personal details about why I fucked with Odd Future and Tyler or why I still fuck with him today. So Odd Future really started like in 2009 or really 2010 is when they really like came out as a group. Um, and I first got into Odd Future from Earl Sweatshirt. I heard the song off the mixtape Radical. It's called Cool. If you guys haven't heard it, go listen to Cool by Earl Sweatshirt. It's fucking crazy. I listened to that song and I was like, fuck, dude, this is crazy. This guy can rap. Like, what are these other dudes about? That's when I really gave Tyler a chance. And then I started listening to Tyler's music the way it was supposed to be listened to. I think a lot of people hate on Tyler or hated on Tyler because they misinterpret or they don't understand how to listen to that kind of music. Tyler wasn't an artist that you could just grab any song and listen to it and be like, oh yeah, this shit's fucking tight. Like maybe sandwiches or yonkers or something like that. But like really the majority of his songs, you have to understand and come at it from a perspective of like, this is a story. What kind of story is this guy telling me? So I took Bastard and I listened to it all the way through and I became a fan instantly. Honestly, I really connected with Tyler on a personal level because that's what you do, dude. When you're 14 years old, 15, 16, 17 years old, and like you're going through shit as a kid or like as a boy, or maybe there's girls watching this, and you like go through these times when you're like a teenager becoming an adult, it's like you have boyfriends and girlfriends, and there's kids at school, and popularity, and like fuck, like what is going on, all this shit, drugs, like all this shit, and it's like I found comfort in Tyler at that time because like he was expressing a lot of things that I couldn't say myself you know it's like at the time I'm worried like oh fuck am I popular enough like why don't these kids fuck with me like who fucks with me and then I listen to Tyler and he's like fuck being popular like fuck all the popular kids like I'm the most unpopular motherfucker ever but motherfuckers are still fucking with me it's like just shit like that made me connect to him, you know? And then of course he says shit that just a normal person can't say, like fuck school, fuck my teachers, fuck this, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, I like this, get money, fucking rap, skateboard, and fuck school, and all this shit. It's like, as a young, impressionable kid, you're like, fuck, it's like, you can't do anything but gravitate towards it, and that's exactly what I did. I think a lot of kids at the time were like really making fun of me, or like clowning on me for how much I was into Tyler, like I was crazy about Tyler. I wasn't like a fucking weirdo, like, 
fucking jacked off to pictures of him and shit. I wasn't that weird, so fucking calm down. But, like, I was definitely into him, dude. And it was, like, something that, like, was a huge part of my life, dude. And, you know, for those reasons, I was just impressionable as a kid. And, like, when I was sad, I could listen to Tyler or Odd Future. When I was mad, I could listen to him. When I was happy, when something exciting happened, when something sad happened, there was always a song. It's like Eminem, you know? It's like my brothers and Eminem, you know? Whether you're mad, sad, happy, excited, fucking pissed, whatever, there's a song that fits it, you know? So I saw, I got to experience Odd Future in its entirety, dude. I watched them come up. I watched them for the first time on Jimmy Kimmel Live when they performed Sandwiches, and then later Tyler released Goblin, and then Yonkers dropped, and the video fucking went viral. I've seen Odd Future and Tyler countless times, probably times that I couldn't even count on two hands. In Northern California, I saw them like two or three times in LA, four times in LA, in San Diego, Arizona. I've seen them all over and I was just gravitated towards what they were doing, their attitude towards things, how they were kids, but they were fucking making hundreds of thousands of dollars and touring the world and making music. It was all something that I wanted to be a part of and that I enjoyed watching. That was the thing, like I enjoyed watching them and it was just like something that I could look forward to, new music, shows, clothes, all that shit. I had a bunch of OF gear and I was mainly super, super involved in the OF scene, dude. And that was all like 2011, 2012, 2013. And then around 2013 is when you see like the group really start to like deteriorate and you see people leaving or beefing with each other or like Odd Future just starts to become what it wasn't before. Earl comes back and you see some interaction with Odd Future and Earl and Tyler and Earl, but it really wasn't like it was before. You don't hear any crazy, crazy songs uh, like you did before with Earl and Tyler. I feel like around the time Earl came back, I feel like a lot of people had high expectations. Like they were so used to this old Earl and the old music that he was putting out and everybody like put so much pressure and expectations for him to make like some vulgar, like old kind of shit that he was known for making, you know, but he comes back two or three years older and three years more mature and he's a different person, you know, so he starts dropping this music that's not really like it used to be back then and, you know, like it was a huge deal for him. A lot of people were like getting at him sideways like, where's the old shit? We want the old Earl and he was like telling his fans like, do I even have any real fans? Like, why can't you guys appreciate what I'm doing now? Like, I'm a different person. I'm not 15 years old anymore. I'm not making that kind of music. So I feel like when he came back is really like when the turbulence started for OF and all that. They had a lot of expectations for Earl Wolf and like the things that they would do together. And the reality of it is, it's like that just didn't really happen, you know? You see Tyler and Earl working a little bit together. They brought Earl out in New York for a show, but really, no music was made like their old shit together, you know, like Orange Juice or like Epar or Couch or like anything like that. There was none of like really that old shit that was made. And you know, I understand they both grow up. It's like the whole phase. You just grow up and you get into different shit and you become more mature and you change. People change over time. That's just what happens, dude, you know? So I feel like after like 2013, especially into 2014 is when you really start like seeing the like OF disintegrate as a whole, you know, like person by person, maybe not everybody's doing their own shit. Haji and Left Brain, they drop numbers. And then Domo does the Alchemist mixtape, No Idols. And then Mike G has his shit going on. The internet is doing very good. They drop Purple Naked Ladies and they have their own tours going on. And then you see Tyler really start like separating himself from OF and Odd Future, like into golf and golf wing. Like he leaves the Odd Future behind in the OF website. And then he starts golfwing.com and like, Golfwing.com never used to be there in the olden days. There was no such thing as golfwing.com, you know, so he makes that and starts focusing like more on golf and then he starts doing his own shit too. Like there's a lot of shit with Loiter Squad and like shit that he's kind of doing more on his own. You see him touring on his own, doing shows on his own, like for the first time. Always when they did shows, it was everybody. It was Domo, Haji, Left Brain, Sid. Sid used to DJ all their shows. Then comes 2014 
even the end of 2013 and like you just don't see that anymore dude you know like Tyler's growing up and separating himself and like trying to find his own way which I think he's always been stable in that way I think he's always been the center of odd future and like the most like sought after artist out of all of them but he really like starts doing his own shit and still to this day I feel like people connect to Tyler on a level that's so 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 crazy like I said nowadays it's like you don't really have that controversy anymore because yeah sometimes his lyrics are still crazy but it's nothing compared to what it used to be back in the day and now it's just like he's a hugely known rap star or hip-hop star not really like this controversial artist that you had back in the day but still a lot of people connect with him on a personal level I still do today too I still look up to Tyler and I still fuck with Tyler very very heavily you could see the influence and inspiration that he has on me if you guys have seen the studio like all the prints in that studio are are designs I got from him or I got that he created the watermelon desk I built I got that from a polo shirt that he did so he still has influence on me today I'm not like the biggest craziest fan like I used to be but I still have a lot of respect for Tyler and I still look up to Tyler a shitload the dude is a fucking genius straight up like I've watched some in-depth details with Tyler and even watched interviews with Clancy his manager like kind of explaining Tyler's mind and he's just fucking crazy dude another thing I wanted to point out too is like I think Odd Future as a whole, or especially Tyler, is super, super, like, they are this solid, like, base ground level for, like, what hip-hop and underground and clothing is today, dude, straight up. If you think about it, before Tyler, there wasn't really any much artist that did everything in-house or did everything by themselves. When they first came out, like, it was huge. Tyler was like, fuck labels and fuck managers, fuck ARs, fuck everything, dude. He did everything by himself. It was like the first time you see an artist getting big and coming up from sitting in his own basement or his mom's or grandma's or friend's basement making beats, rapping on the beats, mastering the track and putting out the track and making a shitload of money from it. All his visuals were done himself. He directs and films all of his own visuals and it's like today in hip hop and clothing that's the base of what it is. It's like you cannot be popping in the underground if you're not doing the shit yourselves. Now you see fucking Suicide Boys, Puya. you see a bunch of underground artists chilling in their fucking house in their basement with their fucking bed on the floor and some shitty poster on the wall and they're rapping and making hits. But like before Tyler, you never really saw that. He was like the first pioneer that like started that shit in the underground all his own beats, all his own visuals, all his own everything and I think that's why a lot of higher up people in the music business has respect for him like Kanye West and Pharrell. They're like, damn, look at this kid straight from scratch. No samples, no nothing, doing everything on his own. So he's just a huge inspiration I think to like this generation, like the late, like early to late 90s generation he's just like a huge influence and he still is today dude i got a couple golf wing tats i'll show you guys uh, I was that crazy. I got a golf wing tat like five years ago and then I got one like three years ago too So I'll show them at the end of this video I hope I included everything in this video like why he's important to me like how that scene was when it first started um, And I hope you guys got some information out of this and the people who requested this video I hope this was enough for you guys um, so thank you guys for watching if you guys want to see more content like this, please subscribe I'm always doing like discussion videos like this clothing videos just array of shit, dude I'm always doing different shit. So subscribe to the channel follow me on Instagram if you do not already uh, Thank you guys for the support and then we will see you guys on the next video peace I shit on the nigga with no bladder and throw it in his eye to show him he don't matter. The night creeper in a nice white jeeper with three 